Hey everybody, welcome back to White's World. Hope you all having a fantastic day today. In today's episode, guys, obviously we're, go we're going to be finishing off the Enderman farm, all the decorations, all that kind of stuff. But before we get into that, I have a few things I want to discuss with you guys. First off, I already have today's comment, and the reason I have today's comment already is because as you, as you see behind me, I've been working with the shulk box a little bit. I've adjusted the tiers, and I'll be adding a fifth tier. So before I go into that, though, let's just explain what this comment is. So today's comment is from Iva Peterson, who said, Hey, White, great video. I wanted to tell you that I think it's better to have the red box for redstone. If I were you, I would use blue boxes for building materials also you can use green or lime boxes for everything to do with nature seeds flowers etc thank you so much for the comment Ivan. and thank you all so much for all your wonderful comments last episode as always they were superb thank you all so much for that uh but the reason i chose this comment in particular is because i'm almost implementing <laughs> all of these all of these suggestions in one way or another so let's start off with the red box Yes, I, I, it does make a lot more sense to have redstone in the red boxes. I also have rockets in these bo in red boxes as well. That's kind of my goal. So uh, that's, that is one suggestion I'm implementing. As for the tiers and the colors, here's what I'm deciding, right? So we're, gonna, so we're still going to have these basic colors, and we're going to be adding brown as a color. Now, brown is going to be food and nature, almost like the green or lime boxes from from this baby right here, from this comment, uh, we are gonna be having brown boxes for our food. So food, seeds, maybe not flowers. Flowers may still go in red boxes, but we'll see. But as for the other tiers, right? So tier one is still project boxes. Tier two, instead of using blue for building boxes, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to be having black for building boxes. Still starts with a B, still has a nice little ring to it. I think it'll turn out pretty good in the end. We're still gonna have decoration boxes as well. But these are going to be red this time, with the exception of rockets and redstone are going to be in these boxes. And then last but not least, as it's raining and as I go to go sleep because I hate the rain, uh, white boxes are still going to be valuables. And instead of having the ender pearls in the project boxes, I'll be having ender pearls in the valuables box. I'll, I'll have an ender pearl box. I think I actually already have a pearl box. Yeah, I do have, have a pearl box for the white section. So... That's kind of the breakdown. As you can see, we I'm going for red boxes for redstone. Having black instead of blue for building materials, I'm going to be going with brown instead of green for nature. Now, the reason I'm choosing these colors, guys, and the reason I'm not choosing just like bright colors or different colors, I'm trying to go with a theme for these, for these, for these different tiers and for these shulker boxes in general. As you probably, as a lot of you guys probably know, the color theme for my channel, it, it, a lot of the colors that I use are black orange red white and a little bit of brown sometimes Not brown brown isn't very often just pretend that this is a brown box right now i can't get a brown box yet because i don't have cocoa beans yet but um that's that's the reason i chose these colors for these shulker boxes it's not because i don't think that that they won't necessarily go better with a different color i'm trying to keep a consistent theme through all my shulker boxes and with my channel because this white's world series is basically my channel. I have other series that are great and they're fun. I've had some that are longer than, than this series, but this series is my baby and I want this series to reflect my channel. So I'm also, I'm doing that in a way that is through circle boxes as well. So that's why I'm impl implementing it this way. Hopefully you guys understand. Thank you all so much for the comments. Like I said earlier, I really do appreciate them. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the shulker boxes away in just a second. I did do a few things off camera other than just shulker boxes, which I'll show you guys in just a minute. If we can get these. Oh, I also did name the project boxes uh, by numbers. I didn't uh, say project box one, project box two, etc., etc. I just named them by just what number box. So one through four over at the Enderman farm, five, six, seven, and eight are over here. So. That worked out pretty well in the end. And of course, we still have to name all these shulker boxes, which I will get to in the future. I, I named a few in a live stream, but I still have a bunch more to get to. And of course, we need to dye this one brown once I get cocoa beans. So all of that is good and ready to go. But guys, a few things I did off camera. First off, we're on the latest snapshot. As you can see, 17W15A, which implemented some interesting stuff in terms of uh, advancements. So... I did get an advancement on camera, finally. Uh, I got the bow advancement. If we head into our escape advancements, we have these advancements right here. So this is the adventure tab. I'm not sure why it's before the Minecraft tab, but okay. <laughs> uh, so we have this We have this adventure tab, and obviously I still haven't gotten sniper duel. I haven't gotten monsters hunted. Kill one of every mon- Oh, monsters hunted, that, that's a new one. 
want to deal. I haven't done villagers yet, but there's there's a new advancements tab uh, for adventure. So we we have adventuring time, which is which is discover every biome that was an achievement before. We also have different colored beds as well. So making a bed, changing your respawn point is is an advancement. Now I did have to uh, break my bed and replace it when when updating, but I really like how the colors of these beds. I don't have any. Do I have any extra wool on me right now? I do. Let's make a brown bed very quickly so I can show you guys what these other beds look like. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it wasn't updating for me. So if we make a brown bed, we'll have a brown bed. And I really like, I really like the colors of these beds. They very much reflect the wool colors. They very much reflect just all colors in general. And in my opinion, they look pretty darn awesome. So <laughs> GG Mojang, good job. I'm pr really proud of you guys. <laughs> I really love how these beds have turned out and we'll actually keep this brown bed on me for now This will be my bed that I keep on me for now uh, And all that good stuff, but also yeah, there have been a bunch of advancement stuff uh, I think parrots can now swim stuff like that you, you guys can go on the minecraft website if you really want to look into more of this stuff But to me that was the most significant change like by the way I'm not sure why I removed gateway hasn't been checked But okay, and one last thing I did off camera guys is I named a few of these dogs now I have a little thing to admit guys a few of these guys did die you, as you see, there will be no names missing yet. I did add a few more names. I added Ponyo. I still have like 30 names to name dogs. I've been trying to get a, a bunch more dogs, but it's going to take a lot more breeding and a lot more searching and whatnot to get the, the kind of numbers that I'm going to need. Uh, but I did have a few dogs die to that lava, which was not fun. I think it was about six dogs. <laughs> so I had to bring new name tags. Obviously, it's, it's not the same dogs. I think these are some of the few that died, but um, still... Still, the name will still be remembered, so hopefully you guys don't mind uh, that the, the original dogs did die, but I do have plans to continue with these dogs. I just have to find a lot, a lot more, like I said, and breed a lot more, and well, you should have a huge dog army over here pretty soon, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, but yeah, that's, I think it's about it. I think it's about all I did off camera. Uh, and now, guys, now is the fun part. Now is the time for us to finish the Enderman farm. I have to finish the tunnel. I have to finish... Uh, I have to finish the actual area where the where the enemies fall down all that kind of good stuff uh, And then we if we have time today We may try something else, but I'm not entirely certain if we'll have enough time today to get everything done that I want to get done other than just the enemies farm So hope you all will enjoy today's episode. It's gonna be a pretty fun one. Like I said, hope you all enjoy Let's get right in, into the action This just in apparently you can craft and rods Cool <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I think we do have a few end rods in here as well. Yep, we do. So I have about a stack and a half of end rods. I don't think it's going to be enough to finish off our tunnel in here, but maybe it will be, maybe it won't. One other thing I want to try with you guys on camera, obviously, we're going to need some carpets. I think, um, I guess we can just take half of these, make some carpets with those, take half of this right now, make some carpets with those, actually make a little bit more. I'm not entirely certain what I want to do for the pattern. I was thinking purple on the side. What do we like? I like the purple. Yeah, I like the purple on the outside a lot more. That's definitely what we're going with. So that's what I'll be doing for the carpet on here. Obviously, we can't use boats on this ice then, but it'll make things a lot easier going all the way down to the end. And it's something a little bit different. You know, I haven't tried packed ice uh, with carpets on, on top of it yet. So it'll be pretty interesting to see what comes out of that uh, and, what, and what, what, what all we can do with that and whatnot. Uh, but I hope that I have, I hope that I have enough materials uh, to do everything that I want to do. Let's see. Hopefully so. Um, we may run a few, like I said, we may run a little short on end rods. But everything else, everything else we should have plenty of. We should have plenty. Yeah, we have some popcorn fruit right there. We have plenty of other stuff in here. Maybe four project boxes right here. I think, I think we have everything, guys, at least to get this tunnel design done. So, guys, I'm going to go ahead and we'll start working on this tunnel. We may do a little bit of talking during it as well. Today's probably going to be a little bit of a talky episode other than designing the room down at the end because, obviously, we've already done this. So, and I have a few topics to talk about uh, that you guys may want to hear. So, I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get started on this tunnel design, guys. And uh, I'll bring you guys back in a little bit with hopefully a finished tunnel design. Maybe a little bit of talking here and there. We'll see. The importance of doing things outside of YouTube and more, I guess, generally outside of the internet. That's what I want to talk about for a couple minutes here. This past, I guess, the end of last week, uh, I went on a little trip with some real life friends. 
for a, a couple of days. It wasn't it wasn't a huge deal, uh, but uh, it was still a lot of fun to, to be on, on to be on with with real life friends. And I came to this realization. Uh, I guess not really a realization, but it, it confirmed what I was thinking that going on trips, going on, going to places, doing things outside of the internet, outside of school or what you're normally doing, it's pretty important. It's pretty important to go outside, your, go, to go outside of your comfort zone uh, and to do things outside of, specifically for me, <laughs> YouTube and the internet. Uh, for the most part, I don't do much outside of the internet. I do YouTube, I do school stuff, I do, um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's pretty much all I do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, that's all I have time to do, to be honest. Between school, things for school, things for college coming up, uh, and different things for YouTube and gaming and, 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 and stuff like that, I don't have time to do really much, much else outside of that. So, uh, for me, th this was a pretty... I wouldn't say new experience, but a pretty uncommon experience to go outside uh, in the real world for a bit on my own, uh, you know, a as a, as an adult and and do things. Uh, as many of you know, I'm I'm still in high school. I'm I'm 17 right now, uh, so I don't necessarily know a lot about being an adult. But uh, what I do know is that doing things outside of YouTube, doing things outside of the internet, is really important to recharge in those, those creative juices. Before I left. Uh, I was definitely getting to a point where, uh, maybe not necessarily the week before I left, but several weeks before I left, I was getting to a point where I had been doing so much YouTube and so much online that I was becoming uninspired. That's why you, a lot of you guys probably saw videos being sporadic between not having time and just not having the motivation. Um, things weren't going too well for me on the YouTube side. I, I was choosing to go play Rocket League or go do something else rather than do YouTube, which for me, I, I wasn't very happy about. So having this opportunity to not ha even have to worry about anything on the internet or on YouTube, I think I did respond to a few comments or something while, while I was away, but not having to worry about any of that for several days was a good, a great experience for me, uh, something that I don't do particularly often. Uh, because obviously YouTube and school and all that, all that kind of stuff takes up a lot of time, and rightfully so. It's pretty important stuff to me, uh, and I do enjoy at least the, the YouTube part of things uh, a lot, so I, I choose to do that a lot more than I probably should. Um, but it, but it, I realized after, after, this, after this past trip that uh, taking time to go out with friends, taking time to do things other than YouTube is a pretty important thing. I didn't realize necessarily how important it was until I went on that trip. Uh, so that's something I, I kind of want to relay to you guys. Uh, if you're a content creator or if you're just a viewer who uh, spends most of your time on the internet uh, or, or on YouTube or on Minecraft or, or whatever it is that you do, take some time, go out if, if you have any real life friends or even if you don't, take some time away from this whole YouTube, uh, gaming, whatever scene, uh, take some time out of that occasionally and go out into the real world, go out and, and enjoy yourself, uh, <laughs> outside and, and away from this whole thing. It really helps you. It really does help you stay motivated. It really helps you to, uh, appreciate the, uh, the, the, the different things online. Uh, it helped me to appreciate, doing YouTube and how awesome it is that I'm, that I'm able to do this, um, in my free time. It, it helped me to appreciate, uh, being able to play games. It helped me appreciate, uh, th this game in general. Uh, so it helps a lot is what I'm trying to say. And I very much encourage all of you guys out there. If you aren't someone who already goes out and does other things outside of the internet, I highly encourage you to do so. Uh, whenever you have time to, whenever you feel it is, it is most necessary, uh, because it, it it does help a lot. It does help. But guys, that's about all I wanted. To, I wanted to talk about. If you have any thoughts about this topic, leave them down in the comment section below. But 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 without further ado, if I can stop stuttering, we'll get back into today's episode. Ladies and gentlemen, I am inspired right now. Things are just they feel so good. I got a comment last night from. Uh, someone I know, someone you guys probably know as well. His name's Crime Mo. 
He gave me a lot of inspiration with his comment. He was talking about different things I could do for this tunnel design. One thing being that I could have a little too high block area right here for, you know, just regular old tap space bar, zoom, 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 all the way down, which I personally really like. That's why I put this in here. I think it looks pretty good with the design as well. And as you see on the sides, he was saying that to prevent Enderman from teleporting, you apparently, according to Il Mango, can uh, put carpets on top of each other and it'll keep uh it'll keep the endermen from teleporting to them which i figured i'd try it out why not because i was a little worried that just having these single carpets on here would allow endermen to teleport into here so i tried it out and i like it i like it a lot it keeps us contained in here and it looks really well with the design it works so nice i'm a big fan i'm a huge fan of this thank you so much for your comment crimo thank you all so much for all your comments of course, I'm missing a, I'm missing one carpet right here. I don't I just don't have enough wool yet to get that. This took a lot of wool, by the way. This took stacks and stacks and stacks of wool. We need to get a sheep farm at some point. But on camera, guys, in a little bit. First off, why the heck are those Endermen sitting right there? That makes no sense at all. I put an, another uh, half slab on top just to try to keep these Endermen from teleporting into here. Yeah, I guess it's not working out too well. Uh... Thank you, Enderman, for, for, for doing this for me. I, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you. <laughs> this is the one thing I hate about Enderman Farms and having this area is because you only, it, it limits your creativity having to have only like a two or two and a half block high <laughs> gap. I guess for some people it, it helps them, but for me it just really limits what I can do. I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, but I'm going to have to think of, of a design, guys. I'm going to go ahead and go off camera and fix the top. I'm going to go ahead and try to get a design done down there. See what I like, see what I don't like. And I'll bring you guys back in a minute with some ideas. Guess who's been busy again? Yes, that's me. <laughs> and I've done a thing over here. Obviously, this is not finished, but I'm trying something out here. We still have the, the stone slabs in the middle here going all the way around. I also realized how these endermen are getting out of there. They're just glitching through the block. So it was not, by the time we get these, these going, actually, those don't help too much. Not entirely certain why they're going through the block. Thanks, Mojang. <laughs> A little bit weird, but that's okay. Anyways, I'm trying to think over here with chests, and it's not looking too shabby, I don't think. Let's actually just remove this. Um, I'm using endstone brick for the very bottom. I don't have a ton of that stuff. But that array for chests, I think, is a pretty cool thing. And if we put some more chests over here, and put some more chests over here. And of course, we'll have trap chests in the middle for a lot more storage, and we'll repeat the same storage thing over on this side as well. So if we just go something like, I'll show you guys how I created this. Give me that, give me that pick. So we go something like that, and all the way across, you know, we have a, we have a pillar right here, right next to it. Oh, that's not good. That's not where that should be. Something like that, and all the way across here. Now, theoretically, Theoretically, uh, Enderman should not teleport to this because it's a too high area, but who knows? <laughs> I think they can teleport to a two and a half high area, but not a too high area. So that's something to, to take into consideration whenever we're building this. I still don't know a whole lot about Enderman spawning, but, uh, I, I think I know enough to know that when, uh, when, uh, an Enderman's gonna possibly kill me as I'm, I'm as I'm killing its friends so <laughs> we'll we'll see what I can do with that all right and it's something like that and then down here obviously we take this out something like that I don't have a ton of endstone brick like I said I'll, I'll do whatever I can though do something like that and we take out this bottom layer of slabs and put us some and stone brick. I think it's a wonderful color contrast. I think it works out pretty darn well. And uh, overall, it, it, it just works out well, in my opinion. It just works out well. Now, one of the issues I have, obviously, is that this, you can't open this top chest. Why, you ask? Because on top of here, top of here is some slabs that, um, they're not slabs. <laughs> they are full blocks. So what I was thinking of doing was replacing those with that, something like that on the top. That way we can still access these chests. Everything looks good there. Kind of flat, but it still works 
out well. I guess that'll work. <laughs> Something like that. Pretty simple. All the way across. Something like that for all of our chests. Yeah, I think that'll work out pretty well on the ceiling. The ceiling's going to be pretty simple. Uh, but that's all right, I think. I think that'll be just fine. Is that all good? I think we're good on that front. I think that's sort of the design I want to go with. And of course, we have our killing chamber in the middle here. I'm not entirely certain what I want to do with the sides here or with the walls yet. But of course, as time goes on, I'll go ahead and figure that out. Uh, so yeah, let me get back to work, guys. Let me see what else I can do. I'll be back in a moment with some more progress. Hopefully, after getting, after getting more, more materials and doing a lot more off camera, guys. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at all those enemies falling down. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, but guys, this room, this room right here, I think is pretty much done. And I want to show you guys what I've done with the room. Of course, you probably saw a, little, a, little, a few clips of what I've done, but I want to show you in person what exactly I've done. So on these two sides, obviously, are two chest areas. Put some end rods in the middle, a few slabs. You'll see a common theme of these purple slabs on the top. Uh, I just kind of like them for a good, for a good... Uh, ceiling design that way I, I didn't have to replace blocks have water flow all the way around here Obviously we can have a two high areas now makes things a lot easier going around this place as well You can just hop off the ceiling pretty cool stuff um, But these two places are identical. We have what is it? 12 double chests on each side so 24 double chests on each area and of course I've started filling these up I have a whole I have a whole double chest of ender pearls already filled up which is pretty awesome actually uh, Of course, I'm probably gonna want a different sword that way we don't get too many ender pearls too quickly I have looting three on this sword right now, which is why we have so many ender pearls already and all that good stuff um, But also I decided to, to replace I have ender chests on these on these two sides and I have end stone brick Around the middle and around where these endermen fall. Uh, I'm also not entirely certain why there are endermen that are getting pushed out of this area and into this area. If you guys know, please, uh, if you guys know why, please let me know down in the comment section below. I'd really like to know how I can fix this. Uh, I assume I could fix this by simply putting, going, putting another slab down, but I don't know if that'll actually work. So uh, let me know. And one more thing, I've got some end rods around here, but in this back area, since we have so much space, and since we have two chest areas over here, I'm thinking about putting an enchantment station right here. Uh, I feel like th th that would probably be the best use of this space. And quite frankly, we, we could use an enchanting station around here. That way we can actually, you know, get some XP and uh, make some good tools, make, make some good armor, whatever we needed. We could do it all right here at the Enderman farm. So I'll probably do that in, in the future or in a live stream or, or something like that. Uh, but, but, we'll, but we'll see. Uh, that's an, another thing. If you guys really want an enchantment station around here, please let me know. Uh, it'd be a, a good thing to know. <laughs> a good thing for, for me to know if you guys are, are up for that as well. Um, but guys, like I said, this place is pretty much finished. Hopefully you all like this. Hopefully you all enjoyed today's episode. I know I did. And this right here, this tunnel, this tunnel is my, is my favorite part of this entire build. I'm really happy with how this came out. One problem I have, of course, is that I, I, I can get stuck on the sides, but uh, when I'm not stuck on the sides, things move pretty smoothly. So pretty happy about that. Pretty happy with everything that's gone on in today's episode and, and, and pretty happy with the fact that we finished this tunnel and this enemy farm and it's pretty awesome but guys that's where i'm gonna end things off for today hope y'all enjoyed if you did enjoy the video go ahead smash that like button leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you're new and or not already subscribed until next time guys take care and i'll see you later